Hello friends! Welcome or welcome back to Get Ready with America. I'm SJ, your resident field organizer and beauty guru hybrid, back to update you on the two states holding statewide elections this cycle. Today, we're focusing on Virginia, where they're electing the governor, lieutenant governor, and attorney general, along with the entire House of Delegates. I'll do a quick refresher on candidates and a little bit of the politics, but I want to take some more time than I have been to talk about how to vote. Making sure people knew all of their options to vote was one of the reasons I started doing these videos to begin with, and I found myself focusing less and less on being comprehensive with that info in favor of being another sassy political commentator, which is what I didn't want to be. I'll include a link in the description box to a Google Doc with links to candidate websites, news articles, and other references so you can come to your own conclusions on candidates, and I'm going to stick to what I'm best at, explaining voting systems and logistics while slapping makeup on my face. Today, we're slapping on a look using the University of Virginia's colors of navy and orange. Let's get into it. We'll start our recap with the governor's race. Former Democratic Governor Terry McAuliffe, Republican first-time candidate and private sector hedge fund manager CEO Glenn Youngkin, and newly formed Liberation Party candidate Princess Blanding are the candidates on the ballot. McAuliffe served as governor of Virginia from 2014 to 2018, where he governed with a Republican majorities in the General Assembly and managed to uphold many of his progressive campaign platform promises with vetoes and executive orders when he couldn't compromise with Republicans. If he wins, he would be only the second governor of Virginia to serve a second term since the Civil War. I'll link an article in the doc on why governors in Virginia only serve one consecutive term. He would also be working with Democratic majorities in the General Assembly this time, assuming the majority holds in the House this year. Youngkin won the Republican nomination in June with a very careful strategy, attracting Trump supporters by taking on some of his talking points, most notably that the 2020 election was fraudulent, but also not dipping in too deep that he alienated moderate Republicans. He continues to straddle that line now to attract independent voters, but still hold on to the base that he needs. He has been promoting early voting, framing it as a way to get ahead of the Dems in the vote count since they get counted first on election day. Princess Blanding is a school administrator, community activist, and the sister of Marcus David Peters, a black man who was fatally shot by Richmond police during a mental health crisis in 2018. Following Marcus's death, she founded Justice and Reformation, an advocacy organization focused on mental health care and protecting those in crisis from police violence. After working with elected officials the last couple years to pass legislation, she's running third party due to the belief that changes to protect marginalized communities cannot be made within a two-party system. I've linked the candidates' websites and a couple articles about them and the race in the doc. Hi, my name is Hala Ayala, and I'm running for the 51st district. Hala Ayala. Great. Next, we have the lieutenant governor's race. Democratic delegate Hala Ayala faces former Republican delegate Winsome Sears. The matchup will give us either the first Latina lieutenant governor or first black female lieutenant governor, but definitely the first female lieutenant governor in Virginia history. The simplest Google search on this race has like no articles on what's happening, and that's absolutely having an effect. The most recent polling done on the statewide races says that 38% of respondents were undecided for that race. And that was the majority answer. 
I of course looked through this survey at all the numbers for something weird that could explain this, but no, that was the weird thing. Only 10% of respondents were undecided in the governor's race, with numbers that are similar to other polls released. And even the attorney general's numbers make sense, which I'll get to in a second. Even the political article that talks about this poll only talks about the governor's race results, even though you'd think they'd at least mention that they also asked about the other two races. The only recent news I've got is that Sears fired her entire campaign staff of 55 people a couple weeks ago and is now working with a major consulting firm. That story is linked in the doc along with campaign websites so you can check out the candidates and the poll I was just talking about. I'm Jason Yaros, the son of an immigrant. I grew up in the attorney general's race, incumbent Democrat Mark Herring is running for a third term against Republican delegate Jason Yaros. Herring has a solid record over the last two terms of progressive work defending same-sex marriage, abortion access, Obamacare and healthcare access, environmental protections, and immigration. He wants to focus on criminal justice reform in a third term. Miyares is a former prosecutor who wants to focus on criminal justice, period. He's a very traditional conservative Republican who will pretty much be the opposite of Mark Herring. This race is facing the exact same void of coverage that the lieutenant governor's race is, but I said the polling results were less weird for them. Since Herring is a two-time incumbent, many more people know him by name than Miyares, so Democrats and left-leaning independents know they will vote for Herring. While I'd say half of Republicans and right-leaning independents are learning who Miyares is. I've included their campaign sites in the doc and nothing else because uh, this one is pretty straightforward. Two well-disciplined candidates on completely opposite sides of the spectrum, so they're basically at the mercy of their gubernatorial running mates bringing in the most voters that vote all the way down the ticket. Lastly, all 100 seats of the House of Delegates, the lower house of the General Assembly, are up for election for two-year terms. Democrats have a majority of 10 seats, which they gained in 2019. Ten members are not running for re-election, either due to retirement or losing their primary election in June. Eight districts have completely uncontested races, meaning the current sitting member faces no one in the general election. According to independent election information nonprofit Virginia Public Access Project, 23 districts have competitive races this year with five Republican seats with potential to flip and 18 Democratic seats. I'll link that page in the doc and highly suggest clicking around the VPAP site to learn more about Virginia elections and the money that funds them. Let's talk about how to vote, shall we? The deadline to register to vote or update your address is Tuesday, October 12th. You can register to vote online in the Citizen Portal, which I've linked in the description box as well as the Google Doc. If you have a signature on file with the State Motor Vehicle Commission, you can register straight up online. Otherwise, you will have to print out the form to sign and take or mail to your local voter registration office. Early voting has started. 2020 was the first year that Virginia opened eligibility for mail-in, absentee, and early in-person voting to all voters, which made up 60% of ballots cast last year statewide. 
You can apply for a mail-in absentee ballot in the citizen portal or with a traditional paper application submitted to your voter reg office. And the deadline to apply is Friday, October 22nd by 5 p.m. If you have applied for a mail-in ballot, you can track its status on Ballot Scout which will show if it's been sent to you, if it's been received, and if it's been accepted. I highly suggest checking on your ballot status in case there's an issue and it's rejected. Voter reg offices are supposed to notify you in writing, but in case you miss the notice, it's good to have this backup since you have until noon on Friday, November 5th to rectify whatever is wrong with your ballot. In lieu of returning your ballot through the mail, you can drop it off at your local registrar's office and any satellite offices, plus you can drop it off at your local polling place on election day. Some counties have additional drop-off locations like boxes or other offices accepting them, so check with your county to see all of your options. If you're returning it by mail, it must be postmarked on or before November 2nd and received by November 5th to be counted. Early in-person voting takes place at your local voter reg office during designated business hours. This also is determined by the individual county and you can look up their contact info on the state's Department of Elections website linked on the doc. If you vote early in person, you are required to show ID and I've also linked the list of acceptable forms of ID in the doc. Early in-person voting ends Saturday, October 30th, and it really is a great option to get voting out of the way if it works with your schedule. Do you still just love voting on election day? I can't knock a ritual. Polls are open Tuesday, November 2nd from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. You also will need an ID to vote on election day, so please check out that link. You can check the citizen portal for info on your polling location or talk to your local voter reg office. Is your head swimming with all the information I just gave? Lucky for you, Virginia created this adorable voter pocket guide that shares just about everything I just said, and more. You'll find important deadlines, info on your options to vote, types of ID that are accepted at the polls, and your rights as a voter. Namely that you cannot be denied the right to vote if you are legally qualified to do so. Thank you, State of Virginia. They published this in four languages, in a digital version and a printable version, and I've linked it in the description box and the doc. That's it. Please let me know if you like this format, and especially the doc with a comment and a like. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and consider supporting me either monthly through my Patreon or one time with a virtual coffee. Both of those links are in the description box. Also, if you're ever curious about what I'm using, I list all the makeup used in the description box as well. I'll be back later this week with an update on New Jersey. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.